It's absolutely not an endorsement. The first thing that you read when we put out that release says it's not an endorsement. Every year, every presidential election cycle, we invite the presidential candidates to come. We extend that to anyone who is a nominee. And in this case, we have two presumptive nominees. We invited both of them. We got a yes from one of them. We'd love to get a yes from Kamala as well. But in this case, this is an important hour. We have people whose lives are depending on what happens in the Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black. And now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She is always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a historically either one. black college. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't. Because she was Indian all the way, and then all of a sudden she made a turn and she went, she became a black person. Just to be we have inflation, we have the millions of people falling in, we have Afghanistan, which was the Wait. worst, most embarrassing moment in the history of our country. What he has done to our country, and her too, what they've done to our country, she has been a horrible vice president. She's considered the worst vice president in the history of our Mr. country. President, Don't interrupt you, but would you consider taking the cognitive test? Mr. President, I, I would love to and do make it. it public. Well, I've already taken two of them, but I'll do it again. Mr. Mr. I president, how do you president? intend to... I suggested, to Harris, that uh, let's take one. I said, Joe and I will go and take a cognitive test. Now, I'd do it with her, too. I would do it with her also. You know what? She failed her law exam. She didn't pass her law exam, so maybe she well, wouldn't pass the cognitive oh, test. Mr. Mr. President, are you saying she yeah. wouldn't pass? Just to I'm, be clear, I'm you, just giving you the facts. To be clear, you don't think Harris. How do you intend? You and she and didn't look. pass her bar exam, and she didn't think she would pass it, and she didn't think she was going to have it pass it. And I don't know what happened. Maybe she passed it. I she guess did she pass it. There's a she man did, over here. I think he, he must work. Mr. For President, her. I would love to ask you about. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'm glad I waited to do this story, okay? I was going to talk about this story that involves the woke black journalists of America, aka Democrat Party propagandists, boohoo whining and crying about Trump getting an invitation to the National Association of Black Journalists conference to do. An interview. Yes, they were upset and mad because apparently they don't believe that black people should hear from Trump, that the National Association of Black Journalists should interview Trump. And if they do, then there has to be certain parameters, like, for example, live fact checking of everything that Trump says. So a lot of people like, for example, Roland Martin, who I wouldn't call a journalist as much as I would call a propagandist for various reasons. Uh, he was upset, one, because he wasn't able to interview Trump. He was not one of the journalists that were allowed to ask Trump questions. But he was upset and boohoo whining and crying about uh, Harris Faulkner of Fox News, Rachel Scott of ABC News, and Semaphore's uh, Kadia Gaba, uh, three women being able to interview Trump, but no black male journalists being able to interview Trump. And also, again, making sure that all of Trump's lies are fact-checked and push back on in, in real time. This is what he was complaining about. Comments like those make it all the more surprising then that the National Association of Black Journalists announced an interview with Trump at its annual conference this Wednesday. One co-chair of the event, Washington Post columnist Karen Atia, just resigned from her position in protest. What is the main problem with NABJ inviting Donald Trump to be interviewed tomorrow at the conference in Chicago? Look, we've always invited presidential candidates, Republicans and Democrats. 1996, Bob Dole and Jack Kemp were there in Nashville. 2016, uh, uh, Bill, uh, uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump were invited. Trump did not come. He did not come in 2017, 18, 19, or 20. The difference here is Donald Trump has been far more vicious in his attacks on journalists, on journalism, and the fourth estate. He has pushed fake news. He has sat here and lied about the election results. And so the reason I've been so upset is because when the, the news came out, is first, there is no way Harris Faulkner and Fox News or any representative of Fox News should be on any stage at NABJ questioning Donald Trump after they paid $787 million to settle a case where they lied about the election and they knew they were lying. Then they have a second case that's going on. Two, no black male journalists. Got 4,000 members. I'm down for the sisters. And if there were three black men and no sisters, I would be joining the sisters saying, what representation? Thirdly, right. no black-owned media. 
Look, you can fact him, fact check him, but you've got to have folks who are willing to 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 go at him and say, "I'm sorry, that's a lie. That's not true. You must stop it in its uh, the moment it is said. You can't sit here and allow him to pontificate. We already know he's going to lie about HBCU. He's going to lie about black unemployment. He's going to lie about these things. But more importantly, NABJ condemned him multiple times for its attacks on the media. And so what you're dealing with is a serial liar. So unless you are willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, and Harris Faulkner and Fox News will never do it, then you cannot deal with a liar. You must be as aggressive in fact-checking him as he is aggressive in law. Yeah, so I want you guys to understand. Roland Martin is hilarious because he's begging these journalists to do what he failed to do as a so-called journalist uh, when he interviewed the most corrupt mayor in this country, Tiffany Henyard. Okay, it's so funny. He, he's begging these journalists to do a hardball interview with Trump because he must be held accountable for his lies. In fact, checked in real time, told it he's wrong. But again, this guy didn't do that when he had one of the most corrupt mayors in the history of this country sitting in his studio, in his face, he refused to do what he's begging these journalists to do. And that mayor has hurt way more black people than Trump has, right? I mean, let's keep it 100. But another fascinating thing that I want you guys to notice about Roland Martin's little meltdown here is the fact that he bought up that, well, this is the first time Trump has done one of these interviews with the National Association of Black Journalists, which by the way, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure how this is allowed, but you can't have a National Association of White Journalists, okay? We need a National Association of White Journalists for real equality here. But anyways, but anyways, Roland Martin pointed out the fact that Trump hadn't done one of these interviews before, kind of criticizing him for doing this for the first time, right? And not doing it before in the past. But yet Kamala Harris is not here. Apparently Kamala Harris is too busy hanging out with, you know, her college sorority sisters or whatever. But Trump did decide to come. He accepted the invitation. And Trump is being criticized more for showing up for what he already knows is going to be very hostile uh, territory uh, than Kamala is who decided to snub these so-called black journalists, right? She had more important things. And what I also found to be funny about these guys, again, remember the narrative is that Trump is scared to debate Kamala, okay? But yet, Kamala was invited to be here and she is not here, right? She's not here, which again, is funny because Kamala says anytime, any place, right? I'm ready to debate. Trump shows up here. You would think that Kamala would be here to face Trump, right? She said, if you got something to say, say it to my face. So why isn't Kamala Harris here at this conference so that Trump can say it to her face? Again, it's funny how that works, right? Uh, it's almost as if you don't walk it like you talk it, Kamala. <laughs> okay, to quote Quavo, since that's what we're doing. It's just funny how that works. So anyways, this interview was firework. It was probably one of the best interviews I've seen Trump do since 2016 because the way that Trump is going to destroy these woke black journalists is hilarious. It is glorious. This is one of Trump's best moments that I've ever seen, okay? I'm not exaggerating. So without further ado, let's get into this. Mr. President, we so appreciate you giving us an hour of your time. I want to start by addressing the elephant in the room, sir. A lot of people did not think it was appropriate for you to be here today. You have pushed false claims about some of your rivals, from Nikki Haley to former President Barack Obama, saying that they were not born in the United States, which is not true. You have told four congresswomen of color who were American citizens to go back to where they came from. You have used words like animal and rabbit to describe black district attorneys. You've attacked black journalists, calling them a loser, saying the questions <laughs> that they ask are, quote, stupid and racist. You've had dinner with a white supremacist at your Mar-a-Lago resort. So my question, sir, <laughs> now that you are asking black supporters to vote for you, why should black voters trust you after you have used language like that? Well, first of all, I don't think I've ever been asked a question so in, in such a horrible manner, a first question. <laughs> You don't even say, hello, how are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network. And I think it's disgraceful that I came here in good spirit. Uh, 
I love the black population of this country. I've done so much for the black population of this country, uh, including uh, employment, including uh, opportunity zones with Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, which is one of the greatest programs ever for uh, black workers and black entrepreneurs. I've done so much. And, you know, and I say this, uh, historically, black colleges and universities were out of money. They were stone cold broke. And I saved them, and I gave them long-term financing, and nobody else was doing it. I think it's a very rude introduction. I don't know exactly why you would do something like that. And let me go a Because step. she's a propagandist, that's why. And Trump, in this moment, has every right to be upset because he's correct. You walk out on stage. This is the former president of the United States, okay? Show some respect. Seriously. Because they would never do do this to a Democrat, right? Imagine you come out on stage, you sit down, and the first thing they do is lob a question at you where they accuse you of all types of crazy shenanigans, right? I mean, just a loaded question, just an absolute bomb of a question. They drop on you before asking you, hey, how you doing, <laughs> right? How's life? Cracking the joke. First and foremost, we already know they would never ask a Democrat a loaded question like that. Like, she would never do that, right? They would never do that to anybody else except a Republican. They would never do that. But again, it's just the fact that these people seem to not care about the fact that Trump was once president of the United States and that there is a certain amount of respect that he deserves because he was the former president. But these same people will boohoo on and cry about, oh, you're pronouncing Kamala's name wrong. Oh, you're not calling her Madam Vice President. You need to put a title on it, right? They, they always boohoo on and cry about Kamala being disrespected. But these people have been disrespecting President Trump for years. And this is just a continuation of it. Further, I was invited here and I was told my opponent, whether it was Biden or Kamala, uh, I was told my opponent was going to be here. It turned out my opponent isn't here. You invited me under false pretense. And then you said, you can't do it with Zoom. Well, uh, you know, where's Zoom? She's going to do it with Zoom, and she's not coming. And then you were half an hour late, just so we understand. I have too much respect for you to be late. They couldn't get their equipment working or something Mr. was President, wrong. I, would love I think it's a very nasty question. Well, I, I have answered the question. I have years. been the best president for the black population since Abraham Lincoln. Better That's than, my answer. Better than President Johnson who signed answer. the Voting Rights Act. And for you to start off a question and answer period, especially when you're 35 minutes late because you couldn't get your equipment to work in such a hostile manner, I think it's a, a disgrace. I let really me, do. Let I me just ask a, a follow-up, sir, and then we'll move on to other questions here. Uh, some of your own supporters, including Republicans on Capitol Hill, have labeled Vice President Kamala Harris who is the first black and Asian American woman to serve as vice president and be on a major party ticket as a DEI hire. Is that acceptable language to you? And will you tell those Republicans and those supporters to stop it? How do you, how do you define DEI? Go ahead. How do you define Diversity, it? equity, and inclusion. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Is that what your definition? Give that me is, a, that, that give, is literally Give me a definition then. Would you give me a definition DEI. of that? Give me a definition. Sir, of I'm that. asking you a question, no, no, a you very have to direct define question. It. Define the, define it for me if you I would. just defined it, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is only on the ticket because she is a black woman? Well, I can say, no, I think it's maybe a little bit different. So uh, I've known her a long time indirectly, not directly very much. And she was always of Indian heritage. And she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black. And now she wants to be known as black. <laughs> So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She is always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a either black one. College. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't. Because she was Indian all the way and then all of a sudden she made a turn and she went she became a black person. Just to be clear, sir, do and you I believe think, that she is I think she somebody a... should look into that, too, when you ask a continue in a very hostile, nasty tone. It's a direct question, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is a DEI hire, as I, some Republicans I really don't have know. said? I mean, I really don't know. Could be. Could be. There are some, and there are uh, plenty. I know this lady right over there, Harris, is a fantastic person who just interviewed me at length. And we had a great interview, I think, and I heard you got very good ratings on that Well, you interview. told me it was a Wow. Wow. Okay. So what Trump just did there was masterful. 
he masterfully handled that, right? That's the way that Republicans should be handling these questions from reporters. I'm so serious. I know a lot of people are triggered. Oh my God, he said that Kamala wasn't actually black. Well, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. I know the mainstream liberal media, they're going to lose their mind. They're probably losing their minds right now as I make this video, right? I know they're going to lose their minds, but it's the truth. Everybody, including black folks, don't actually believe that Kamala is black. Nobody <laughs> believes that she's actually black. Everybody knows that before she decided to run for president, she was taking advantage of the whole, oh, I'm Asian thing, right? I'm Indian thing. That was her thing growing up. I did a video with Judge Joe Brown talking about her father claiming that uh, he's of Indian and Irish descent. Okay, there, there's no real evidence that Kamala is black. I'm so serious. Like, what is the actual evidence? It's not that she went to an HBCU because anybody can go to an HBCU. They're Asian people. They go to HBCUs. They're white people that go to HBCUs. That doesn't prove her blackness. Her being in a so-called black sorority doesn't prove her blackness either. To me, she seems like an opportunist. She seems like the type of individual that will do anything for power, right? That's the story that I am starting to believe about Kamala. I mean, that is a story I believe. She will do anything for power, including date a man that's <laughs> damn near what? 30 years older than her, right? A senior citizen as a young woman, young 20 something year old woman date running around with a senior citizen. Why is that? Because she will do anything for power and control. So who am I to believe that she wouldn't flip flop her race for power and control? I don't know. I don't know. But the truth is that Trump is saying what a lot of people are thinking. And I promise you, this will resonate. Again, people are going to lose their minds. The mainstream, let me, they're going to lose their minds over this. They're going to boo on and cry racism. Yada, they're gonna, that's what they're going to do. But a lot of people are thinking exactly what Trump just said. And this is the type of interview that made Trump in his 2016 run so special. Because he did not hold back. He does not give one F about the so-called journalist being a black woman. He's still who he is and he put her in her place as he should. Because a lot of people, again, if that was some other standard normie Republican, they would back down. They would start apologizing and trying to explain themselves. He, he, didn't, he, he didn't even play defense with the DEI thing. The reason why he asked her to define it is because he wants to see if she's going to define it in a positive or negative way. It was a set up question. It was great. And this is why I, lo I love when you turn the questions back around on these people, right? Because they're, they're trying to get you a gotcha questions. Notice how he made her actually say what she meant, which is that, well, do you think that Kamala Harris was only hired because she's a black woman? That's what she actually meant. I love that. I lo this was like the best exchange I've ever seen, right, from Trump. Well, one of the best exchanges, at least, you know, as of recently. But he made this journalist actually reveal what her intentions were, which is to, again, try to get them on, well, do you believe that Kamala only has her position because she's a black woman, which they will then try to spin into, well, see, Trump's a racist. He doesn't believe that black people are qualified. Even if they have all these qualifications, he didn't even fall for that. He made her reveal what she actually really meant. And then he said, listen, I don't even think she black, bro. <laughs> so, so, so I'm not sure how you can say that, you know, I think she was hired solely because she's black. Because I don't even believe that she's black. <laughs> Yo, that's wild. That is wild. Again, if Trump, if, if, if Trump keeps this up, he needs to do more interviews like this. This is what he should be doing, bro. I promise you. I promise you. This is what this country needs. People who are telling it like it is, saying the things that should be said out loud that people already think. And this is why I F with Trump. Okay, if anybody asks me, why do you like Trump? Well, here's a clip. Okay, send him this clip. This is a great explanation. So, yeah, I did watch the rest of the interview. I thought it was pretty good. Um, but again, the question is, when is Kamala going to sit for an interview like this?
Will will Kamala go on Fox News? Right? That's the question. Because here's the thing. They keep calling Trump scared. For whatever reason, they're trying to say that Trump is scared to debate Kamala, but he just went into the lion's den. A black journalist association conference. This man went in there and answered the questions that were super hostile. When has Kamala ever done a hostile interview like that? I can't think of any. But again, nobody's going to be asking the question of, well, why won't Kamala go to Newsmax or News Nation or Fox News? Why won't she go to any network that's not friendly towards her, right? That's not Democrat Party propaganda. Again, that's the hilarious part about this. Trump went in there, right, held his own, walked out. Kamala didn't even show up. She didn't even show up. Again, it's it's really amazing how this race is, is shaping out. But I, I do think <laughs> that um that exchange between uh Trump and that journalist where Trump basically said that Kamala is not black. The media, they're going to be losing their minds over that. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.